But what happened on December 7th, the same day in 1965? It was another shock for the Orthodox world. That's when every Orthodox Christian had their spiritual bank deposits, the spiritual wealth were drained from them and they didn't even know it. The spiritual wealth that they had disappeared. The grace that was in the Orthodox Church was forced away and the people did not know it. They were hoodwinked <clears throat> by, the, by these wolves in sheep's clothing, by these scoundrels who decided that they are going to do what they want. They're going to do what they want because they think that they have the freedom now to dominate the teaching, the tradition of the Orthodox Church. What makes them think so? Because we are bishops, they would say. We are patriarchs, they would say. Ah, I'm a, I'm a patriarch of Constantinople. I'm the patriarch of Antioch, of Jerusalem. <clears throat> I'm Greek, or I'm an Arab, or I'm Russian. I could do whatever I want. How is that possible? I'll explain how it's possible. Because if you did what they did on December 7, 1965, if you did that in Byzantium, you couldn't have got you couldn't have gotten away with it. But now, since there is a canon in the church that says everything in the diocese of a bishop shall be put under his authority. Oh yes. There's this canon. <clears throat> so these scoundrels said everything has to be in our name. And so every, everybody apparently listened to them. They demanded that. So everything was underneath their name. But they did something horrible. They fell away from the church. They became ecumenists. Mm -hmm. In nine, 1965... December 7, they left the church and hoodwinked everybody. And if anybody wanted to leave, uh, sorry, if you left, you leave by yourself. You leave with nothing. Because the church is in my name. The church is in our name. And you have no recourse. Whereas if it was done in Byzantium, there was recourse. We had a king. We had an emperor. And if any bishop acted so disrespectful to the faith, you bet the king would wring his neck, <clears throat> to put it mildly. So bishops wouldn't act so uh, horrible to the people. They wouldn't dare because everybody had recourse to the protector of orthodoxy, the king. <clears throat> but now, no king. So these bishops said, we could, we could do whatever we want. Who's going to stop us? Okay, 
Let's get, gather money and build this big, beautiful church. Let's adorn, adorn it with icons. Let's uh, endow it with all these wonderful things. <clears throat> and, oh, by the way, I'm going to deny the faith and become a mason. And there's nothing you can do about it. And if you don't like it, you could leave. And don't even dream of taking the church. Whatever church you have, a big church, a small church, it's all in my name, the bishop would say, and you can't do anything about it. Well, that's exactly what happened. And so on December 7, 1965, the wealth the glory, the grace of the Holy Spirit left the ecumenical World Orthodox Church. <clears throat>